Cello Doll YouTube channel. Today we have another Cello Tips and Tricks vlog, and this one is covering the bow, specifically my top three most common mistakes I see while teaching beginner cellists. Not only that, but I am going to offer tips for each mistake on how you can work on them in your practice room. So before we get to the tips, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up, a like, and subscribe to the Cello Doll YouTube channel to show your support. If you want to go above and beyond, I am on Patreon where you can support my free cello content, future projects, and as a thank you, get exclusive monthly rewards. So you can check that out in the video description. So we are going to go right out of the gate with one of the most important factors of the cello bow arm. The relationship between your elbow and the wrist. And the main factor I want to talk about with you is the height. So in order to show that more clearly, let me uh, pull a little 90 degree turn with the power of video magic. See what I did there? All right, now you guys are going to get a good side profile view of my bow arm. Often I see beginners starting off with a very high right elbow. And as you can see, there is a downward slope, almost like a ramp, going from my elbow down my forearm into my wrist. And that is really going to give you a lot of problems. You might not notice this right away, but you are actually suspending your upper arm. You are making an effort to keep your arm held up. You wouldn't just sit on the couch and hold your arm up. You're going to get very tired in a few minutes. And when we're encountering all of this activity with the bow, we forget about that. So a good visual cue to keep in mind is to have the elbow below the wrist. So as you can see, now I have more of a V shape. You can also do mini shrugs. Okay. And that's going to encourage your natural weight to sink down your bow arm and into the bow. So you can have good bow contact, which we will get to. Another visual cue you can imagine is a flamingo or an ostrich, and that's going to encourage a perkier wrist, not strained or locked. It should be curved, but again, we don't want to overdo anything. So a little curve. Of course, we don't want to be scrunched up like this. You want to reach out through the elbow hinge. You see how my elbow is opening and closing. So that is my first tip for this super important concept, the bow arm wrist to elbow ratio. All right, it's time to face you dolls front and center again. Let's go. All right. So the second most common mistake I see is the bow angle. Is your bow straight and in line with the cello's bridge? Or as you bow, does it wander? You can see that my bow is at a diagonal. So we refer to that as the bow angle. And it is so important to maintain a straight bow throughout the entire length, both on our down bows and our up bows. So here are some ways to see if you have a crooked bow. I encourage students to practice in front of a mirror or to essentially do what I'm doing right now in recording this vlog, where you have a phone or a laptop in front of you, put your camera on selfie mode, and you have a mirror. You can watch yourself and see what is going on with your bow. I find bows get most crooked when you pass the halfway point. So here are a couple ways the bow can go crooked, the causes and how to correct them. So you can pick any note and as you draw, if this happens, your bow is winding up at the bridge. My arm is too far back. So as I was pulling the bow, the arm hooked back. You see my elbow, it's swinging. And that causes the tip to travel down. So keep 
your bow arm more forward facing and think of it as a horizontal motion. And a trick that I like to tell students if this happens, have the wrist slightly reaching out to your audience. Where do you want your sound to go? To the audience. As I get to the middle, I'm slightly reaching out my wrist and that helps to correct a wandering tip that goes down. Now, the other way is the opposite problem. The tip is going towards the fingerboard and my bow arm is pretty much straight, almost to the point where my elbow is locked. It is very uncomfortable. So if your tip is going towards the fingerboard, correct it by having that elbow bend. You see, you can see from the front a little bit of that V we talked about. So bend at the elbow and that is going to keep the bow tip from swinging up. So now I kept the elbow a little bit swinging back, a little closer to me and not reaching out so much. So as you can see, they are different solutions to the same problem, depending on where your tip is wandering. So here's a quick way to summarize and remember this. If the tip is going towards the bridge, then you need to elongate the bow arm a little bit and move the wrist and elbow towards the bridge. We are counteracting that angle. If your bow is going towards the fingerboard, then the elbow and wrist need to have more of a bend and come back towards the fingerboard. So my final most common bow mistake I see is the bow sliding up and down along the string like a pat of butter in a frying pan, just sliding around and not staying in the same spot. So I'm going to play using this incorrect bow sliding and I want to challenge you dolls to see if you can hear how my sound is going to dip. As opposed to. So the reason I saved this tip for last is it happens because of a combination of the first two common mistakes. If you have a bow arm form where the elbow is high or changing and you don't have the heavy low elbow, you don't have a lot of weight in the string. And if you don't have a lot of weight in the string, that's going to allow the bow to slide around. Secondly, if your bow angle is off as you travel, that is again a sliding bow. So a third thing you can keep in mind is what I've been mentioning throughout this video and is so crucial, your bow arm weight. You never want to press with the bow. Pressing implies that I am exerting a force rather than just putting the bow on the string and just having my hand sit there. You can plop the bow on the string and it's gonna support you from the bottom. And that's going to keep your bow in one spot and you're gonna have a secure contact point. So a couple things you can do, we talked about it before, is the shoulder shrug and feel the release of your weight going into the string. That's gonna kind of tap into this feeling. You can also do some bow hops. I'm not doing anything crazy, not, don't, don't do that, please. I'm hovering it a few inches and I land. I hover, I land. And the final step is to hover, land, pull. Land on the string, pick any note you want. Now you might hear a little bit of grit to start and that's okay for now because you are feeling out this idea of the weight. 
that just means you need a little bit more bow speed. And that's something totally easy to fix. What's not easy to fix is playing super light with a suspended arm and then having to go back and correct it. So really sink into the weight and pull. All right, my dolls, I hope you found some of these tips helpful for your time in the practice room. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave a comment below and I will try to help and answer however I can. Thank you all so much. Again, please don't forget to subscribe to support the channel. Happy practicing and I'll see you in a future vlog. Shelly will be there too, as always. Bye my dolls.